found it. Check it out. This is why I work so hard for it. This was worth it. Hi, my name is Amor Rodriguez and this is Amor Rodriguez Survival. Welcome to my channel. After so many days of learning and practicing long distance precision shooting, I'm now finally ready to go to the Oregon coast and to try to catch and cook a Roosevelt elk. So basically we're scouting these roads. We're scouting for the for the elks for the elk season, the second coastal elk season. So we got into some of these logging roads and we're gonna scout a couple of spots that we can glass. There was a local guy that showed me a couple spots of where to start looking, where to start hunting. Okay. One more day scouting, so that's a big part of the game. When you are new to an area, most of the time is spent walking, getting to know the place. Similar to when going on alone, we get drop off First thing people do is start to get to know the area, where you're gonna put the shelter, where is the good hunting grounds. And same thing when coming to a different bioregion to hunt a game that you are not familiar with. Really inexperienced in elk hunting because I don't do it in Indiana, where I live. I'm just going to a bunch of areas, man, checking them out, see where people have seen them, trying to find the freshest tracks. I have two places that are really good. They have a fresh scat, the freshest I seen. And the trails, you can tell where the elk has been crossing. Uh, lots and lots of sign. So, yeah, we're gonna keep trying, trying to scout, trying to figure out where we're gonna see them. So these are kind of the areas we're looking for. Big, open clear cuts that I can see from far away as to not to disturb the, the elk or the deer or the bear, whatever you're hunting. But sometimes you get elk that have been bombed or midday snack and you can see them out there. Really incredible spot for glassing. Really awesome. Oh, deer. Well, some running out here. You can hear them crashing down there. You can hear them crashing. Let's mark a spot on the map. They're going down to the water. Okay, we found a, we found them. I just saw the back of him when I came up the hill because he was super inclined. The good thing is that they are logging trucks going here all the time, so I don't think they're completely spooked way out of the area. But we gotta keep an eye on this herd. I'm gonna map it. Going to the what we call the eagle's nest. Really good lookout. But over here where we're going is public land for hunting. Scout, last day of scouting. So made it, made it to the, to a glassing spot. Yesterday we went up there. And that's where we scared the elk out there from the top. And they run down. Okay, Thursday, <coughs> Thursday evening, tomorrow is Friday. The beginning of the elk hunt, opening day, and I think this is the office of the ODFW, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. So I'm gonna try to go get my tags right now. Let's go see. So we did, uh, went to talk to the guy. They didn't want me to film there. They said no way. But we talked to the guy at ODFW in charge of the travel management areas, all this land thing. So he can drive me up to where I want to be. I'm going to have to walk it, find a way to get to where I think I should be. 
on Saturday morning. Really first time here, so. and trying to do it kind of systematically. Scan your close range first because in case something is already out there, you don't want to be glassing out there and then miss us right here first. And uh, But then I do it systematically. I go on the top and drop so I can cover some area and feel pretty confident that I have scanned it. We call this place the Eagle Nest because it's got excellent view all around. It's a recent clear cut, anywhere from 200 to 1,000 yards. It has a lot of green, a lot of, a lot of vegetation that the elk will come and eat. So I think I'm gonna stay here, kind of quiet, low key, no moving. I feel pretty good about it. I think I'm gonna take some ranges and then wait for until I cannot see anymore, until sunset, half an hour before sun, after sunset. Just got my bull, finally. Just got it. He's down there, check it out. I can't believe I just got my bull. This is unreal, so pumped. I put so much time, so much effort, so many resources in making it out here to try to make this happen. My last morning hunting, my very last thing to do, and I made it happen. I had to stalk him. It was so hard, it was so good. Guys, I am so pumped. I am, I gotta make my way down there. 
my ear is ringing because of the shots. My first elk ever. Okay, I shot him from out there, up in the mountain, all the way out there. And I'm pretty sure he's somewhere on this side of the trees. I had to hike all around it because the steepness of that hill can't make it through there. It's uh, too steep. So I had to go all the way around the mountain over here. I mean, I cannot believe it. I cannot be look at this brush. I just cannot believe that I actually have my elk. It took so much effort, guys. I cannot even begin to explain to you how many, there he is. There is my elk. It's a beautiful elk. The color is unbelievable. Look at these tines. Look at his rack. Look at the size of this animal. Look at the body. He's huge. I am so thankful. So, so thankful and grateful for this. It's a huge hide. It's a lot of meat. I can make clothing with the hide. Try to use the brain of the animal to turn the hide of its own hide. I'm gonna keep this antlers at my first elk trophy. Roosevelt elk, Oregon coast. I am so thankful that he, oh my gosh. I have meat on the freezer right now. Unbelievable. I never done an elk before, but it's just like a humongous deer and I think I'll be safe. If you want to see the full processing and the field dressing of the elk, it's going to be on the Patreon site. So check the link down below. Four more trips, maybe. Get a few. little fire to cook some of the elk meat. I'm gonna cook the elk hard so really good tinder. Just gotta make a, a nest to catch the coal and then uh, from the nest you transfer it to a bigger nest and you can blow it into flames. That's, this. That's where we were so if you have this resource you can use a uh, birch, birch bark this one, the cool thing about this one is that it works even if it's wet. You can use it as a cold catch to catch your coal. And I also save some of the shavings when I work in my skills on wood, like bow making, arrow making, uh, fire by friction kits, anything like that that produces these shavings, you can save those and that could be part of your nest. And usually you want to make it really fluffy in the center, but with this type of material, you don't have to, you know. And then you can wrap that on more grasses to blow, blow into flame, yep. You hear the glazings, we gotta get through that, then now we're through the glazing and you see the smoke. Right there. Yeah, that's it. We got it. We got a call. Now you've been working really hard, so you want to be really careful with this coal and dump it on your nest, on your tinder bundle. Remember the fire triangle, you need oxygen, fuel, and the spark. We got the spark from the fire by friction. We got the fuel in the tinder, and we got oxygen, the, the wind coming in. 
giving it the oxygen. Without any of those three, you can't have fire. There we go. And voila, fire. Magic. Just like magic. <laughs> <laughs> so, burn all these paper bags I have here. <laughs> Quite the experience. I had to get out of, as soon as I got the elk, the work basically began. It was really, really hard to pack him out of there. I can see why people will only take the choice cuts, the trophy head, and leave the rest out there because it was really, really difficult. Lots of physical effort, so you, lots of mental gain to like tell yourself that you can still do it even if it's one in the morning and you're packing 125 pounds of meat in cougar and bear territory because you're trying to get the meat home. So it was. Quite the experience, nothing like I ever done before. Such a big animal, look at the size of the heart. Imagine how much blood is pumping through this guy. It's insane. Look how beautiful the meat is. And some clean protein, this elk. They eat the new plants. The elk, the forage, all the new growth on the clear cuts. <laughs> Look at these cuts on me, man. Freaking delicious. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, look at the color. It's incredible. I just want the steak, the heart steak. Should be pretty good. Couple more pinches here in the. I forgot to invite, to invite Martha Stewart to come show me here, but I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna get the oil a little hot. Should warm up fairly quick there and dump some meat in there. Okay. It's getting hot. It's getting there. It's getting there. Get a little hotter. Okay, there it is. Yum, yum, yum. Elk food for dinner. <laughs> I'm only gonna cool it down for a little bit. Here are the fruits of the labor. Yummy. Mmm. Wow. Elk heart. Yum, 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 yum. This is why I worked so hard for it. This was worth it. Now I have hundreds of pounds to feed the family, to feed myself. Clean, good protein. From the mountains, coastal range of Oregon. Yum. Thank you, thank you, Elk Nation. Thank you. If you want to see the full butchering process, it'll be up on Patreon. So check the link below. Yeah, so all the bones will be super nutritious. The bone marrow will be super nutritious for you, especially during flu season, the cold season we're in. So I throw a bunch of the bones into the pot. Then you can throw a whole onion, a couple heads of garlic, um, salt, and boil it for hours. Boil it for a long time until you get all the marrow, all the bones, all into a really concentrated stew, basically. And when I freeze a bunch of it, I want to make summer sausage, I want to make jerky, and uh, 
yeah, my friend Marta was gonna come and help me cook all this stuff. Marta Stewart, you know? No, she's not my friend. Okay, so we got a bunch of the bones that were on the pot, and now Mom has put a bunch of stuff on it. <laughs> ¿Qué tiene, Ma? Este, tiene ajos. Garlic. Este, tallos de cebolla. Onion. Este, lemongrass. Lemongrass, yep. Este, y salt. Salt. Y, y es peppers. Peppers. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to do some good bun broth. <laughs> Uh, that's straight up medicine. If you've enjoyed this content and want to support Amos Rodriguez Survival, check out his Patreon here, the latest upload here, and don't forget to subscribe to Amos's channel right here. Amos Rodriguez Survival is brought to you by Fowler's Makery and Mischief Studios. You can check out our channel there.